Life is built upon DNA. DNA, or desoxyribose nucleic acid, is a group of relatively simple molecules. But when chained together, they can code for very complex tasks in our body. Every human cell has 1.8 meters of DNA, so to handle this amount, DNA is tightly packed in a structure we call the alpha helix. So tight that it even becomes visible for the human eye in some stages of the cell cycle. Here we see a couple of long alpha helix structured strands of DNA called chromosomes. Typically an animal has two pairs of the same chromosome, one from the mother and one from the father. We call these the A chromosomes. About a hundred years ago, however, researchers discovered unusual pieces of chromosome that they eventually called B chromosomes. B chromosomes are chromosomes that escape the discipline of normal DNA transmission. Instead of the 50% of the chromosomes normally transmitted, they enforce themselves in much higher probabilities into the next generation, often at the expense of the individuals bearing them. In that sense, B chromosomes are called selfish. B chromosomes are just one among many other types of selfish genetic elements that poison the genomes of living creatures, but instead of most of them, B chromosomes are very easy to detect because they were so big. You can even see them under the microscope. Although they were very detectable, there is much debate going on about the origin of B chromosomes. So where do they come from? There are two logical hypotheses that may explain the origin of B chromosomes. Hypothesis 1, they originated from A chromosomes. Hypothesis 2, they come from outside, that is from other species. Let's discuss the first option, so Bs are derived from As. To show how this is possible, we need to explain the concept of Robertsonian fusion. A Robertsonian fusion is when two chromosomes with the centromeres near their ends break at their centromeres, following which the long arms become attached to a single centromere, the short arms also join to form a byproduct, which typically contains non-essential genes and is usually lost within a few cell divisions. However, it could also be the origin of B chromosomes. How about the second option, so bees come from other species? Researchers believe this could happen when two species mix. This process is called hybridization. When mixing occurs, it can happen that not all chromosomes pair up. The chromosomes that will not pair up could eventually become B chromosomes. Now which hypothesis is true? We start with summarizing two arguments supporting hypothesis 2. The idea that B chromosomes originated from other species. B chromosomes often consist of tandem repeats of DNA that were clearly different from any of the other A chromosomes. There is often much similarity between B chromosomes in closely related species. If we take a closer look at the arguments, we see that they clearly suggest that Bs do not originate from As within the species, but neither they prove that Bs really come into existing due mixing of species. It only gives us a nice idea about the mechanism of how bees were passed on from species to species. Isn't it strange that bees hop from species to species? If two species mix, this usually results in a very weak, unviable offspring. Are they viable enough to survive, even with a weakening bee inside of them, or do they need to backcross with one of the parent species to introduce the bee? Well, here at least some bees made a very nice solution for themselves. In the Insomnia and Trichomelopsis wasps, it has been shown that a particular bee chromosome helps avoiding the lowered viability block by knocking out half of the genome that might cause the block. Altogether, a firm proof of for the origin of bees through hybridization is still lacking but it seems a plausible hypothesis for, for the origin of some bees. And what about the idea of bees originating from A chromosomes within the, the species? Also for this hypothesis we have no hard evidence, but still some good arguments. These are, some bees are very similar to A chromosomes, as shown in a mosquito. Another argument is that a centric a fragment acquired many features of a B chromosome. This happened, for instance, in Plantago lagopus. 
This all leads us to conclude that both hypotheses were very plausible and not mutually exclusive. The fact that B chromosomes are so widespread among various groups of plants and animals also suggests that there have been several independent introductions of bees. It is hard to believe that drive alone could have established this pattern. The last word is not yet said about the origin of bees.